should analyze the data you have collected while doing the Hooke's Law and Energy Lab. You can see here that in this spreadsheet I have uh, two sets of data, one from the force sensor and the other from the wheel position. This is the raw data that you get in the exported CSV files. The other thing you will notice if you look at the force sensor data is that the sampling rate is once every 0.005 seconds. Whereas if you look at the wheel position data you find that the sampling rate is once every 0.01 seconds. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we, on, we are only dealing with the data every hundredth of a second. So that means I only want samples that are labeled sample number one. I don't want samples labeled sample number zero. So I'm going to click up here and then I'm going to add a filter and it introduces these drop downs at the top of every column. I'm going to click the drop down on the sample column You'll notice that everything is selected. I'm going to deselect all and just select the sample that is labeled 1. It auto applies it. So here I have data now that is selected uh, for every 0.01 seconds. I'm going to need uh, the time data and I'm going to need the data for the force itself which is in calibrated 0. I'm going to add a new sheet presently. I'm going to rename this as force versus position. Our aim here is to make a graph of the force applied uh, by the spring on the force sensor, so the spring force, as a function of uh, the distance traveled by the IOLAB device, which is how much the spring expands, so that we can make a plot of force versus distance and then take the slope and determine the spring constant. So let me copy the time data and let me also copy the force data and I will paste it over here. I'm going to rename this as force and this is in Newtons. Notice that it is in the negative direction. I'm only interested in the absolute value of the force so let me take the absolute value. Like so and I will do this for all the rows. The next thing I'm interested in is uh, the wheel position. So I want the wheel position data and that it turns out is in calibrated zero. So I'm interested in the first column of this data. So to do that I'm going to copy all of that and I'm going to paste it over here. And I'm going to rename this position and that's in meters. Okay, so we have all the data. Um, I have to also now do a further filtration. That's because we're not interested in all of this data. We're only interested in a part of the data. As you saw in the snapshot, um, only a, a portion from um, when the uh, spring is being compressed, you're only interested in some small part of that data. So for my experiment that I did, uh, that is from about 4.39 seconds to about 4.87 seconds. So that's the only data I'm interested in. So I'm going to introduce another filter here. And on the time, I'm going to pl place some restrictions. So I'm going to say greater than or equal to 4.39 and less than or equal to 4.887. So it selects just that data over there and you can see that it has position uh, versus the force and I'm going to introduce another column here. I'm going to call this the absolute value of the position. Let me find the absolute value of these quantities. So I can do this for all the all the rows there. So now I'm interested in plotting position versus force. So I select those, I go to insert and I say I'd like a 
scatter plot and that's what it looks like. I'm going to move the chart to a new sheet. I'm going to call it force or rather I'm going to call it the plot of the force versus position. And there it is. You can see that there's some multiple um, selections here. So here there's a bunch of data that have been recorded by the device that probably has to do with some um, something to do with the motion uh, when I was compressing the spring. There pro was probably some slippage and so uh, that's what you've s that you can see that artifact over here and over here. Uh, nevertheless uh, the data still looks reasonably linear so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this data and add a trend line. Remember on the y-axis we have force and on the x-axis we have position so the slope should give you the spring constant and I'm going to plot a linear trend line and I, I'm going to do some cosmetic changes here. I'm going to make the trend line black in color so it's easily visible. Just change the thickness to about three point and change the line type to solid so you can easily see it. I also would like to display the equation on the chart so I can click that over here. And There's the equation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make this font a little bit bigger so it's easy for you to visualize. So there's the equation that Excel gives you for the trend line and what we're interested in really is the slope here which gives you the approximate value of the uh, spring constant of this tiny spring that you used in the experiment. So here it says that the spring constant is about 216.61 newtons per meter. So that is the analysis that you must carry out in the first part of the experiment in order to determine the spring constant of the small spring that you get as part of the IO Lab accessory kit.